Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to this week's episode of Advanced Bass Fishing, and thanks a lot for making some time out of your day to check the video out. I know that these advanced bass fishing videos are quite a bit longer than my regular videos on some of the other channels. I know it takes a commitment to watch them, so I really appreciate you guys uh, making some time and checking it out. Guys, today we're gonna to be talking about everything you need to know about how to set the hook with every single lure out there. Um, what I'm gonna do in this video is I've got four different rod actions, and I'm gonna go over basically every lure category that there is, you know, power baits, finesse baits, whatever, and I'm gonna show you guys how to set the hook on each particular lure with a different rod action because all hook sets should not be the same. When you're, when you're talking about setting the hook, there are considerations and variables on each particular lure that we're gonna talk about that determine how you wanna set the hook. And one hook set does not cover everything. If you, and the good thing about this video is if you incorporate this, into your fishing, it's going to it's going to add up to a lot more fish in the boat for you, a lot less a lot less lost fish. So um, that's going to be the the point of the video. I don't I don't know if anyone's ever done a video on this on the detail, but that's what we're going to do in today's episode. Also, guys, for get started, just a one you know quick housekeeping tip we do every week on advanced bass fishing. If you guys like what is going on here at advanced bass fishing, you like the longer format, and you're getting something out of it. I'd um, just like to invite everybody to please hit that subscribe button. And the best the best way you can support this channel <clears throat> is by going into my links and using all my links that I put in my description, especially my Tackle Warehouse link, guys. If you guys uh, use and bookmark my Tackle Warehouse link that's in the description of this video to purchase all your fish and tackle, man, you're helping the channel out, me and my family, more than you can imagine. So uh, big, uh, big thanks to everybody that's doing that <clears throat> in today's video. <clears throat> okay. What we're going to do, guys, is I'm going to I'm going to start out with different rod actions, and I'm going to start out. I'm going to talk about the lures that are fished with spinning with different type of rods, and we're going to go into the hook set on every one of them. So let's start out with spinning tackle, and then we'll move to the bait casting. So when you're talking about setting the hook on a spinning outfit, a lot of it depends on the lure that you're using, like anything else. Now, what I want to do is I want to I sort of want to go through about every lure that I can think that I use on a spinning rod, and I'm gonna show you how I set the hook on that. Now, some of them are gonna be pretty similar, some of them are gonna be different, but it sort of gives you an idea of, of how you need to do it, <clears throat> and I'm gonna explain why <clears throat> on today's video. Okay, first of all, guys, let's talk about the, uh, the, the typical type of allure that most people use on a spinning rod, and that's a finesse application with like a shaky head, a drop shot, Ned rig, all that type of stuff. Now. How you set the hook with a slow bait, you know, something that's bouncing on the bottom, a lot of it depends on the type of lure it is. It depends on the size of the hook. It depends on if you have to penetrate plastic or not. Example, if you're using, say, a Ned Rig with an exposed hook on there, you're not gonna have to set the hook as hard, but if you're using like a shaky head where you have to penetrate your hook through a piece of plastic, it may require a little bit more of a powerful, forceful hook set. So let's go through a lot of different ones. Let's talk about the probably the most popular lure to use on a spinning rod, and let's talk about shaky head fishing. Now, shaky head is one of those lures that you're gonna have plastic to penetrate from. <clears throat> so when you throw out there and you get a strike on it, say you're working your bait, you know, your shaky head like that, and you feel a bite. The first thing you wanna do, and we'll talk about this quite a bit in the video, is when you get a bite on a shaky head or any type of a slow lure like that, don't, don't you know feel like you're li like a live nerve ending and it's like you got to set the hook immediately when you feel that bite just tell yourself it's like okay one's got it there's a bite let that fish move out with a little bit and after that fish moves out two three four five foot like that what you want to do is reel down and take the slack out of the line so your line's tight and then pull back like that and reel at the same time it's like when you're pulling back it's like, don't pull back like that and stop. It's like, pull back and reel at the same time. Not real hard, just like just like this. Go, and, and just straight like that and start reeling. You don't really want to concentrate on penetrating the hook with the hook set. That's gonna help. That's gonna get that point of that barb into that fish. But when you set the hook like that and you turn that fish and you start reeling, don't let up on it just keep going until the fish starts turning direction and as long as you 
keep reeling pressure on that fish, you're gonna keep pushing that barb further and further into the fish. Now that's going to be on any type of a lure with a spinning outfit that you have to penetrate plastic. Maybe like a Texas rig worm. If you're throwing a Cinco, like a weightless Cinco that's Texas rigged, you know, again, shaky head like that. Now the other difference, or a, a, like a drop shot, if you if you got your hook, expo, uh, you know, buried inside the plastic on your drop side. Now the next lure category on a spinning rod is going to be your open hook lures, like a jig head worm, a Ned rig, <clears throat> say a drop shot that you've nose hook, the type of situation where your hook is exposed. Now when you're when you have a deal like that, it's like you don't have to set the hook like that. Let's say for example, you're throwing your Ned rig out there. Throw your Ned rig out there, you're shaking your Ned rig, there's one's got it, all of a sudden one's got it. All you do, guys, is take the is is let the line tighten up. Don't ever set the hook on a slack line. Let the line tighten up and just start reeling. Start reeling and pull the, the rod back to you. <clears throat> no hook set required. Just keep reeling and keep reeling. And as long as you keep putting pressure on that fish, it's gonna keep penetrating that hook into that fish's mouth. Now one of the reasons that you don't want to set the hook on an exposed hook like that is the fact that a lot of times on a Ned rig or an exposed hook, you know, you may get the, the hook in the soft part of the mouth. On a bass's mouth here, the, the areas right on the side here are just sort of like membrane skin, and it doesn't take hardly anything to, <clears throat> to penetrate that. Sorry if I'm coughing, I guess you think allergies. We've got pollen so thick you can't even hardly keep it off your car right now outside. So what you, the reason you don't want to set the hook is like if, if you set the hook in that piece of that fish's soft mouth, and if you just reel into it like that, it's just going to put a hole there. But if you try to set the hook and that open hook is in the soft part of the mouth, you're going to tear that mouth. And you've seen, a lot of people have seen this. You can, you can actually put a tear half inch big in that soft part of the mouth. And when that fish jumps, most of the likely it's going to spit your hook out. So on an open hook lure, throw it out there, you got your bite, just start reeling. You know, just keep, keep the pressure on there. That's gonna be the way you do it there. Other lures that I use on a floating worm are gonna be, let's talk about like a float, I mean on a spinning rod is a floating worm. Now a floating worm is a little bit different because I fish a floating worm on an exposed hook, but unlike a drop shot or a Ned rig, the hook that I use on a floating worm is a larger hook. It's usually a one aught or a two aught uh, Gamagatsu heavy cover flipping hook. So therefore, <clears throat> the larger diameter hook requires a little bit more power for that penetration. So if I'm throwing that floating worm out there and I'm working that floating worm, all of a sudden one's got it, I let it swim off with it. Very similar to like the shaky head, reel back, set the hook and start reeling like that. Keep it coming. Got to have a little bit more power with it. The other lures that I fish with on a spinning rod are small crankbaits and um, jerk baits. You guys know I fish all my jerk baits on, on a spinning rod. Now, one of the things about the crankbaits and the jerk baits is, you know, you're dealing with a treble hook, and most of the time when you're fishing it on a spinning outfit, you're dealing with a small treble hook. So you don't have to worry about penetrating these large diameter treble hooks. So therefore, you don't require a hard hook set. So Let's say, for example, I throw out there, I'm working my jerk bait, working it, working it, working it, working it, working it, working it, boom, one's got it. I just start reeling. If I'm throwing it out there and I'm throwing, say I'm throwing a little crankbait and I'm reeling that little crankbait, boom, one's got it. I don't set the hook like that. One's got it, I just start reeling and I keep pulling back. When you're fishing a small diameter hook like that, there's no reason to, to set the hook hard in there. It's all about applying consistent pressure. And another thing with that is by not setting a hook and just reeling steady into the fish, you don't overexcite that fish. I found out a lot of times if you jack a fish real hard, especially in a light line, that fires that fish up, makes it jump, makes it pull harder. But if you get that bite and you just start reeling, a lot of times they don't really know what's going on and they'll come to you a lot easier Obviously, once they realize they're hooked, they're gonna start fighting. But main thing is don't set the hook too hard anytime you've got an open hook. There are a couple of different reasons, aside from the tearing part of it, it's also the, the fact that um, you're using light line a lot of times. Most of the time on spin and tackle, I'm using six to eight pound line. So I don't want to risk setting that hook because you can break the line. There could be a little fray in the line. Six or eight pound test line doesn't you know, handle frays very good. The, say for example, if you're using a shaky head and 
the fish inhales that shaky head and it's got the whole worm in your mouth, the line is gonna be coming out of the end of the fish's mouth and, and they've got rough teeth and that can, the, the fish's teeth can fray your line as well. You don't know if it's frayed or not. Therefore, by not setting the hook and just reeling into it, your odds of breaking the hook, the breaking the line are a lot less. Most every line that I've broken on a spinning rod has come when I've set the hook, you know, too hard. I put too much pressure on it. Usually it happens with a shaky head. But one of the things I'll, I'll tell you about this guys a little bit, and not just with spinning, but with bait casting, is one of the, one of the reasons that I, and I, I talk about a lot here about not set, setting the hook hard, we've been talking about it on the bait casters, is I went through a period <clears throat> losing a ton of fish in my career. Back in the mid nineties, I probably, I probably could have won about 15 Bassmaster tournaments. I had so many fish on and lost them, but I was setting the hook too hard. I was ripping their mouth out, whatever I was doing, I was setting the hook too hard. And I got watching Gary Yamamoto. If you guys don't know who Gary Yamamoto, he developed the Cinco and he fished the tour for years. Now Gary, that the only thing he fished was his own baits, like a Cinco. He fished a Cinco and one of some one of his worms all the time. And if you've ever watched Gary Yamamoto fish, it's like he'll cast out there and he'll, you know, be setting the hook and he'll 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 get a bite. And then all, he then once he has the bite, he didn't do nothing. He just starts reeling just like that. No hook set whatsoever, and the dude never loses the fish. And it makes me realize that we have to rethink how we set the hook a lot because, you know, all this slack lining, setting the hook hard, you're going to lose way more fish than you ever do if you just start reeling them in. I've, I've even proved that into my own fishing quite a bit. So anyway, guys, that's spinning. I'm going to take a quick break here uh, and get something to drink, and we'll be back, and we're going to get into the three different bait cast lines, and we're going to talk about all the lures to use with that. So we'll be right back. Okay, guys, we're back. We're going to get into bait casting hook sets now. Now, what I've done here is I, I've, I've limited this video to four different rod actions. Now, there's a lot of different rod actions out there, but the four that I'm talking about cover most of the bait categories that we're going to have. So. We're going to talk about a uh, seven foot two inch a medium heavy rod this is the mega bass perfect pitch and then we're going to talk about um, a, comp a longer composite softer tip rod this is that mega bass launcher you know that has a softer tip on it it's not real stiff on it on the end and then we're going to talk about lures to use with the flipping stick hook sets on there so we'll get into that okay let's start out let's start out with the flipping stick first you know we'll get into the hook sets with that now flipping is flipping and jerk baits are my two favorite ways to catch fish. Throughout the course of my re my career, I have definitely won most of my tournaments that I've won, and I've won. I bet I've probably won well over fifty percent of the money that I've ever won in bass tournaments flipping with a flipping stick. So I've got a lot of experience setting the hook. And how I realized that I came to this conclusion, what I'm going to tell you, has guys has been through a period of hard earned heartbreak losing fish, losing lots of money, leaving lots of money on the table <clears throat> until I realized how to set the hook. <clears throat> flipping, flipping and pitching. Now, when you're talking about flipping and pitching, there's a couple different scenarios here. We've got, you've got your heavy flipping, you've got your heavy duty flipping, which is usually like the one ounce sinkers with the braided line. And then you have some more light duty flipping. Say, for example, if you're pitching like a little creature bait on an eighth ounce or a three sixteenths ounce sinker into some sparser cover where I may use like 15 pound test line. Um, and then you have everything in between. You got your jig flipping with 25, you got creature baits with 20. You know, when I'm flipping, I'm either, I'm using between usually 15 pound test fluorocarbons. I use Seaguar and Vizex on all my fluorocarbon, 15 to 25 pound test, literally every test 15, 17, 20, 25. And then on rare occasions when I'm flipping mats or, or that type of stuff, I will flip with braid. So each one of those hook sets requires a little bit different set on there. First of all, I'll tell you guys right off the bat, people set the hook way too hard flipping, way too hard. And I'm gonna give you all a prime example of what I'm talking about before I actually get into the specific hook sets. I've talked, I've, I've used this example before. A lot of you hardcore channel members may have heard me talk about this, but it's well worth repeating how I figured this out. I was fishing, I was practicing for a tournament down in Grand Lake, Oklahoma, about probably 15 years ago. And um, back then I 
was I, I used to just jack them. Like when I got a hook, when I got a, you know, a bite flip and I'd set the hook hard and just start reeling. And that was, I just feel, I felt losing the fish was a natural part of it. So anyway, we were down there and I was practicing for this tournament. And in practice, I, I, I've got a box that has my all, my junk hooks in it. I got like rusted hooks in there and I, I use them in practice because I don't, I usually try to shake the fish off. And if I put a little hook in there, I don't care if I lose the fish or not. I, I just want to see the fish or feel the bite. So I was flipping a full size brush hog into flooded willows on the Grand Lake. And I had, I had a little bitty, like a rusted out two lot straight shank hook. The thing was like, it'd been in there for years and it was all rusted over and it was, and it was real small. And when I put it inside the, the bait, it, uh, it, it like, you know, I said, there, there's no way I'm ever going to hook a fish on this thing. So I started flipping and pitching into these trees and I was starting to get bites on there. And every time I'd get a bite and I'd try to shake it off, these fish would swim out there. And I would, I would, I was like, you know, I could, there's one. And it's like, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to shake it off like that. And every time I did that, I wasn't even setting the hook. And I was, I was reeling, trying to shake, shake them off. And I was hooking these fish. They would, they would not come off. And it's like, God, that, they must really want it. So the next day of the tournament, I, I got out there and I started flipping bushes. And of course, you know, when one bit, you know, I just, boom, you know, set the hook hard. And I had 11 bites that first day of the tournament, guys. I lost seven fish, good ones, not just dinks. I'm talking good fish, three, three to five pounders. Seven out of the 11 bites I lost setting the hook hard. And I got thinking, it's like, I was just beside myself. I, I think I had like 11 pounds that day. I should have had like 25. And so I got thinking, it's like, this is ridiculous. I got to change up something. It's like, I got nothing to lose. I'm just going to start reeling like I did in practice. Next day of the tournament, I went out there, did the same thing. I got a bite and I just start reeling them in. I had 12 bites that day. I got 11 of the 12 of the fish in by just reeling them in. And that made me realize that not that you just have to start reeling them in all the time, but you don't have to set the hook hard. So let's talk a little bit about, let's, let's talk about the heavy duty flipping and then we'll go to the others out there. When you're flipping, say you're flipping a, a one ounce mat and you're flipping this thing in the mat there, got 50 pound test braid with a one ounce sinker and you get the bite with, with braid on there. Again, the same thing guys, as <clears throat> soon as you get your bite, don't get all like a live nerve ending and, and think you gotta set the hook. Let the fish swim out of it with a little bit. And with you, when you have braid on, you don't have to set the hook hardly at all because there's zero stretch in braid. So when you when that line tightens up, just lean into the fish like that. Just slow, just start leaning into it and start reeling fast. Don't jack them because think about it, when you're flipping like a big mat like that, a lot of times you've only got 15 feet of line out. So imagine the power, you got 50 pound braid on that's not gonna stretch. You're only 15 feet away from that fish. And if you reach down and try to jack that fish like that, unless, unless you get that hook perfectly through a hard part of the fish's mouth, you're gonna tear that fish's mouth apart and probably lose it. So again, let the line go straight out, just take up the slack and start reeling. Now, if you're flipping and pitching something else, like say, you know, just a Texas rig on fluorocarbon line, a little bit lighter, um, fluorocarbon does have a little bit more stretch. When you're pitching and flipping fluorocarbon, a lot of times, sometimes you're flipping close in and sometimes you're pitching farther out. If you make a long pitch, let's say for example, you pitch out there 50 feet away. If you're, if you're 50 feet away and you're pitching to, you know, dock or whatever, 30, 40, 50 feet away, when you get the hook on there, when you get the bite that far out, you know, again, take the slack out of the line and set the hook just a little bit. Don't, don't like as hard as you can, just, set the hook just like that and start reeling you know put a little bit of force in it because the distance away from that bait you're going to have line stretch so the hook set that you make if it's a little bit more forceful it's going the the, the uh, stretch of that line is going to absorb some of that but again the main thing keep the fish coming keep it pressured now if you're closer in let's say for example you're pitching dock pilings and you're pitching 20 25 feet away and you're using a little bit lighter line, it's the same thing. You don't have to set the hook as hard. Just remember, let that line go straight a little bit. You know, just sort of lean back, reel into it, and keep reeling with it. 
So every one of them requires a little bit different set on there. Okay, the next one we're gonna get into is the composite rod. Now the composite rods, this is that Mega Bass launcher. Guys, if you've never used this launcher, I'd highly suggest that it. it's seven feet, 11 inches long. It's got a good soft tip on it. It's perfect for crankbait fishing. So the, the, the way I set a hook on a composite rod is based upon the lure that I'm using. The composite rods are designed for larger crankbaits for, for myself and for chatterbaits. I use a lot of chatterbaits on them. And then also I will use like a longer composite rod with a topwater lure on braided line. Let's say for example, I'm fishing a buzzbait or a whopper plopper. <clears throat> I really like this seven foot 11 inch rod with the soft tip and the braided line because it just, the braided line, again, I don't have any stretch with it yet. When I do hook the fish, the soft tip, <coughs> excuse me, absorbs a lot of the, uh, you know, the pull that the fish has on there. So let's talk about the baits on the, you know, the big 11 inch, 7-Eleven uh, launcher. If I'm fishing a, a crankbait, like and most of the time I'll be fishing like a larger square bill, a big crankbait like a Mega Bass Deep Six or a DD-22, some type of deep diving crankbait. First of all, I'll cast it out there. And when you're fishing a big crankbait like that, you want to point the rod tip straight at the lure. You don't, on a composite rod like this, you don't want you don't want to put the rod at an angle to where when the fish bites it, the rod flexes like that because it's a little too soft. This is a technique that some of the, the expert crankers from North Carolina, like Gerald Beck and Jeff Coble taught me 30 years ago. Point when you're cranking with a big soft rod, rod tip straight at the bait like that. And we're, you're cranking like that. And if, since it's straight at the bait, you're gonna feel the strike. You know, it's gonna telegraph real quick. As soon as you feel that strike, resist the urge. And I know it's hard to do, but resist the urge to set that hook like that. You're getting that crankbait bite, boom, one's got it. Just keep reeling, don't do anything. Just keep reeling, keep putting pressure on the fish. That's the way to do it on a crankbait. Now, if you're fishing a chatterbait, this is another way that you have to do the same thing. One of the biggest ways you're gonna lose fish on a chatterbait is setting the hook. I learned this again the hard way. Um, I got uh, talking to my buddies, it was the same way. And I started watching Brett Height. Brett Height, if you guys don't know him guys, he's the, probably the best chatterbait fisherman in the country. He went through a roll about 10 or 15 years ago. He won a bunch of tournaments on a chatterbait. And if you've ever watched Brett Height, when he's fishing a chatterbait, you know, he'll be reeling that chatterbait like that and he gets a strike and all of a sudden he just leans, he just leans into it and starts reeling. There's no setting the hook hard. You know, he just starts leaning and puts, puts pressure on the fish. And a lot of times, you know, say he's in the front of the boat like this, he'll get a strike and he'll start reeling and he'll start walking backwards and he's in the back of the boat by the time he sets the hook on it. Again, don't set the hook real hard on it. So I think, one of the things that happens like with the chatterbait is when that bass bites the chatterbait, it, you know, it comes up, you know, grabs the chatterbait, gets the whole chatterbait in its mouth like that. A lot of times, if you set the hook hard on a, on a bait that is inside the fish's mouth that has a fairly large profile to it, a lot of times you will force that fish's mouth open by setting the hook hard and that bait will just come straight out. But if you just start reeling like that, you're not gonna force the bait out of that fish's mouth. And it's gonna, again, by reeling hard, you're gonna keep pushing it, not hard enough to open the fish's mouth, but you're gonna keep pushing it and you'll be getting more penetration with it. That's a big deal with that. Now, the other thing with the uh, composite rod is the braided line topwater buzz bait and whopper ploppers. Here again, when you are throwing a whopper plopper or buzzer out there, throwing it out there, you're reeling it just like that. When you get a strike on a buzzer or a whopper plopper, it's the same deal. You don't have any strike, you don't have any stretch on braided line. So whopper plopper, buzz bait bite, reel like that, boom, one hits it, just start reeling. Don't set the hook, just start reeling, just pull back a little bit, just start reeling. You're not gonna lose near, near the fish with that. And finally guys, the last one we're gonna talk about is the workhorse. And that is, that is a medium heavy seven foot clash rod. This is the Mega Bass Perfect Pitch. I'll, guys, I'll, also I'll link all my favorite rods in the description of the video on my Tackle Warehouse link if you guys want to try some of these. But this is a workhorse rod, seven foot two inch. 
medium heavy rod is a good rod for a lot of different stuff. It's a good rod for fishing, casting the Texas rig worm, <clears throat> casting finesse jigs, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> fishing flukes on them, you know, fishing spinner baits, fishing heavier baits, Alabama rigs, Carolina rigs. It just goes on and on and on the type of stuff you can fish. So we're gonna cover sort of a wide range of different baits here. Now, I know a lot of this is sort of redundant. You're, you're hearing me talk about the same way to set the hook on a lot of them, but I think it's important to understand how to hook, set the hook on each particular lure just to get you know, a feel for you know, the best way to do it with that. So again, let's talk, at, let's talk about the slow baits that you fish on a 7-2. Um, jigs, finesse jigs, creature baits, uh, you know, Cinco's, all that type of stuff where you're actually throwing it out there and you're just working it and you get a strike. Now, the little bit difference here, the difference between the flipping stick, when you're flipping and pitching a creature and a jig on a flipping stick versus when you're using it on a 7-2, most of the time when you're fishing like a football head jig or a, or a finesse jig or, you know, casting a worm, you're making a longer cast with it. You know, you're throwing it out there like on main lake points or something or dragging it off a flat. So most of the time on a casting rod, your bait is farther away from you. And since you're using fluorocarbon, you've got that stretch element. One of the things that here's a, a good way to test it guys. If you, if you get one of your buddies, take, get like, you know, a rod with like 15 pound test line on it and put a jig on it, cast it out there, maybe, you know, 30, 40 yards, something like that, a typical cast, have your buddy grab onto it with his fingertips and you set the hook as hard as you can, you will not be able to pull that jig out of your buddy's hand from that distance away. There's too much stretch in the line. So when you're casting, you know, a distance on your creatures and your jigs out there with the 7-2, it requires a little bit more force. So this is one situation where I'll cast it out there. Let's say I'm casting a 10 inch worm out there. I'm working my 10 inch worm. I'm in 10 or 15 feet of water. My cast is 30, 40 yards out there. When I, when I get the strike, it is so important, once again, this is one of the things you need to take from this. Never set the hook on a slack line. Take the slack out of that line to where your line is tightened up. And then from that stand, do set the hook a little bit. That's basically like this. I'll be working it out there. There he is. And I'll start reeling like that. Now, what that does is that extra power behind that hook set combined with the line stretch actually provides me a little bit of penetration. I'm not going to penetrate it to the barb at that point, but I'm going to penetrate the point of it in the fish. And by keeping reeling it, as I, as I reel it fast like that into the boat, <clears throat> it's going to keep driving that barb into that fish's mouth. When you, another little tip on fighting fish here is when you're fighting a fish, you always want to, I don't mean as fast as you can reel, but you always want to reel pretty fast as long as that fish is coming to you. It's like, if the, as long as the fish is coming in your direction like that, say you're up, right up here, you get the bite. If the fish is coming to you like that, there's no reason to, to let the fish have line or to slack up. Just keep reeling fast. But if it comes up to you like that and then it makes a turn, that is when you have to stop reeling. Let the, let the fish do what it wants to until it turns back around and keep it coming to you. Big deal with that. So that's the worms on there. Now, the other baits that I use on this, one of, the, one of my favorite things to use this rod is with a spinnerbait fishing. You know, doesn't matter the size of a spinnerbait, you know, it can be anything. Spinnerbait fishing is a little bit different based upon how you're working the spinnerbait. If you're fishing a spinnerbait fast, you know, same type of a deal, you know, you're working it out there pretty fast like that one hits it. You don't have to set that hook that hard. Just keep reeling, maybe lean in into it a little bit. But if you're fishing a big spinner bait, like a, you know, a three quarter ounce that has a big blade on it and a larger hook, and sometimes it's got a trailer on there, that's another situation where you have to set the hook a little bit. So if I throw that big three quarter ounce spinner bait out there and I'm slow rolling it just like that, and I get a bite when boom, one's got it, that's when I will set the hook. Because that spinner bait, since you've got wires and blades and a big thick hook on it, you have got to power through that. And the one lure that I set the hook on that I will actually, you know, go like this, set the hook hard on, is on a big spinner bait, simply because I have to move that spinner bait inside of that fish's mouth. Imagine if a four pound bass comes up and engulfs your three quarter ounce spinner bait with a number seven willow leaf blade on it. You got a big willow leaf blade like that, 
<clears throat> you got a spinner bait that may be five or six inches long. You got wires. You got to set the hook hard on a big spinner bait. That is one time that I will do that. Other lures on this thing right here, Alabama rig. For the most part for me, guys, I don't set the hook much on an Alabama rig. I'll, be, I'll just be throwing it out there, reeling it like that. One hits it, I'll just pull into it, lean into it a little bit like that. Another bait to use on it is like a fluke. I do fish a fluke on a uh, you know bait cast rod quite a bit, and my fluke fishing is a little bit different because I use an exposed hook on the fluke. You can refer to some of my past fluke videos. Same deal though, guys. If you're using a fluke, you know you're working that fluke out there. Since a fluke has a larger hook on it and you have a big mass of plastic, it does require a little bit harder set the set the hook on there. You don't just want to you know, let it go tight and start reeling it. You do have to penetrate that hook to some extent with it. Um, but, and another good thing, I'll, I'll mix and match this thing up with it. Sometimes I'll use a big crankbait on it, different type of stuff. Um, sometimes I'll fish like a jig and spoon with this. If you're fishing a jig and spoon, there's no hook set required because most of the time on a jig and spoon, you're jigging it like that. And when you pick it up, the fish is on there. But that's just a general overview of the hook set with those four different type of rod actions. Um, the takeaway, I guess if you could take away one thing with this, here's, here's what to remember. The only time that you need to actually set the hook, now when I'm talking about setting the hook, traditional hook set, this is like a traditional hook set most people realize. Set the hook, boom, like that. The only time that you have to actually set the hook physically hard like that is with a large bait with a large diameter single hook. So we're talking about casting out there a long way away, Texas rigging, big spinner bait, that type of deal. Other than that, almost every lure out there, all you have to do is lean into the fish and start reeling. I know this is counterintuitive. A lot of people just naturally like to jack that fish and they like to lean back on it and set the hook as hard as they can. But promise me guys, I have, guys, I have, like I said, I have, Probably, I've, this is no exaggeration. Throughout the course of my entire career, out of all the hundreds of national tournaments I've fished, I've probably had a chance to win 20 Bassmaster and, and back then FLW tournaments that I had the fish hooked that jumped off or pulled off that I had them hooked and I lost because of my incorrect hook set. It took me years to figure this out. And the best advice I can give you is stop setting the hook hard on most of your lures, lean into it, just start reeling, keep the fish coming, and you're gonna boat far more fish than you ever would before. So anyway, guys, hope it helps out. Um, like I said, learn from my mistakes with it. Hope you guys utilize some of these because it definitely works. And again, I appreciate you guys taking time to, to you know watch the whole seminar and support the channel. Big thanks to everybody and we'll see y'all next week.